Okay, so today we're going to talk about analog to digital uh, conversion. We want to do things on computers, and so the first step in order to process signals on computers is to convert it from its, its continuous form into basically a list of numbers on the computer that I can do stuff with. Okay, and that's what we'll um, look at today. And specifically what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how it messes up the signal a little bit when you do that. Because the moment you go from continuous to discrete, you not always, but often lose some information. Great stuff. Okay, so here we've got a continuous signal like this. We're going to convert it into a digital signal that we can process on our computer. Uh, what's going to happen? What happens to that thing when we um, turn it into a digital signal? How does that happen? Uh, we normally pick a sampling period, like capital T, and then what's going to happen is if this is uh, in time, then every T seconds, we're just going to keep the value that happens there. Okay, so at, at T, we're going to basically save this little value here. At 2T, 3T, 4T, 5T, 6T, okay, you get the point, and so on. So we're going to save those little values. Let me make it a dashed line. How does this, do you know how this happens in circuits? Like, what is the circuits involved here? You have your continuous signal XT, and that goes into a little block, which I'll talk about in a second. And then that goes into another little block called an ADC block, and then comes out the discrete signal. This little block here is often called a sample and hold block. Okay? Okay, and this ADC block that operates every T seconds, it says grab that sample, grab that sample, grab that sample. We're going to save basically these values, uh, and that is our discrete signal. This isn't the only way in which you lose resolution. So someone at the back there said we, we lose resolution because obviously we're not saving the stuff in here, right? We're just keeping those, um, those values in, here, in there. So the sample and hold circuit basically does that little thing for you, and it allows you to grab these like specific points. But we also lose resolution in another axis. How else do we lose resolution? Quantization, uh, what does that mean? Awesome, okay. So that's exactly right. We're going to not, we're not actually going to store the voltage here, right? We're actually going to, and the voltage here, we can't store like infinite precision things on a computer. So what we do is we will quantize things, okay? In a way so that we can actually store it with ones and zeros on the computer. So what I'm going to draw out here is a pretty extreme case. You probably normally have more quantization layers than what I'm going to draw here. But what you, what you will typically have is you'll have, you'll, you'll decide how many bits am I going to use, and then you divide this whole range into that number of bits. Based, or based on those number of bits, you get a number of levels, and then you divide this axis into that number of levels, and then you will map each of these points to the closest level, basically. So if I draw that out, let's say we've got one, two, three, four levels here. And now what happens is we don't actually, we don't actually save, like let's just take one of these points, like this point here. We don't actually save that point. What we're going to do is we're going to map it to the closest quantization level. And then this point here is the thing that we're actually going to save. We'll give that point a name and the name will be something like 0, 0, 0. And this one would be 0, 0, 1. And this one would be uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. When you save this thing on a computer, you're not actually saving the continuous voltage at this point. You're saving the bits. In a way, you, you kind of have two quantizations, right? So you have two, I don't know, let's call it uh, ways, things, uh, get mapped. The one is that it's discrete in time and the other one is that it's discrete in amplitude. And both of these cause like problems actually. Depending on your signal, this is going to mess things up a little bit. Okay, everyone happy with that? Now, very important for this course, I'm just going to introduce some notation, okay? So this signal here, xt, uh, x little t, we sample it at t, at 2t, at 3t, and so on, okay? And 
basically what, what happens is you basically get a whole bunch of samples x of n at t. Okay, so this is the continuous signal, okay, and you're grabbing samples at I don't know, 20 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds, and so on. And I'm just going to introduce this kind of shorthand notation where I use these square brackets to indicate a discrete signal. Okay, so when you see these square brackets, you think discrete, and it's just a shorthand way, so I don't have to write the period every time for basically sampling the, the little parentheses like these, they indicate a continuous signal. Okay. And so, because it's a digital signal processing course, you will see on every slide, basically, from now on, you'll see some square brackets, which basically just means the discrete signal. This thing, this is really just a list of numbers. And they are a list of quantized numbers, actually. So this is just a list of numbers. And if I put in n equal to 3, then I get the sample at the third time point. Okay, And if I put in n equal to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I get x which is a lucky sample because it landed exactly on one of the quantization levels. If we I have this little program called SOX, which plays things in, in Linux, so if we play uh, the song for this course, we can talk about the song afterwards. I have a very narrow knowledge of music, so I only listen to very specific things, so you can complain about that on the course feedback form. If we, if we play this thing, Okay, there you see, uh, you see channels at 16 bit. What does that mean? That is how many bits do I have in order to tell me how many levels I'm going to get. So I will have two to the power 16 of the green dashed lines. Okay, the other thing this thing tells me is the sample rate, 44.1 uh, kilohertz. What does that mean? That's how discrete things are across time like this. So um, the period in that case is 1 divided by 44,000, 44, 44.1 times 10 to the power 3. Okay, you get the point. 